Welcome back to the Craftsman Truck Series live from Austin, Texas. See that Toyota Tundra pacing the field. We will drop the green flag momentarily. Some housekeeping items. Eight trucks to the rear. As you see there, Christian Eckes, probably the biggest surprise transmission issue. They had to swap that over. He'll drop to the rear. Yeah, it was jumping out of first gear. And as Michael said, there's seven times. I talked to the crew chief. He said, yeah, jump out of gear seven times a lap. <laughs> And this is an impound race, so you see those adjustments unapproved if they had to make any adjustments after qualifying. Yeah, we talked to Ben Roach. You see, he's back there because of those adjustments. He had a spring bucket collapse, and they had an issue with their springs, so they had to sort through that. Really didn't think he really learned a lot in practice, so it would be interesting to see if he has the pace to use the strategy that Rich Lucius, his crew chief, was talking about. We talked about strategy, and Ben said Rich had so many strategies, he was losing track, so... <laughs> Well, there's also the option you could run to halfway. You could run to lap yeah. 21 and just pit then and pit one time. Uh, the fall off is less. See the new pavement there, the different colors in the pavement? The fall off is less, these crew chiefs are telling me, because of that new pavement. Yeah, there's a number of sections on this racetrack that have been repaved. And we are back to stage breaks for road courses this year. So we will have a caution at the end of the first and second stage. Watch what happens when we get up to turn one, Jamie. I, I, I can't I, wait. I, I'm gonna, I can't wait either. I just, <laughs> this is what it's all about right here. These guys are going to be going for it. And Connor Zilich leads the field to green at Circuit of the Americas. The 17 all over him as they go three wide, climb the hill 133 feet up, 13 stories into turn one. They lock him up all oh, over Zilich. the place. Zilch went straight off the racetrack, didn't he? He did. He just now got turned, and that's going to hurt those tires. That could flat spot his tires. This could change everything for this team. And our pole sitter gets buried early. That was as wild as we thought it would be, and I didn't see that coming for Zilich. I didn't either. As you mentioned, he had to flat spot those front tires anyway. Taylor Gray is off to the races with a great start. Shoots to the front. Has his brother right behind him in the 15 truck. Talked to both of them yesterday. Love road racing. So this is something they've been really looking forward to this trip to Austin. You can see those Tricon garage trucks are right. Taylor was in the second row. Tanner was all the way back in the seventh position and grabbed second. Taylor Gray is off to the best start he's had in his career. Meanwhile, the, his older brother in the 15, not a good start to this season. But yesterday, maybe it's turning things around with a great start as he runs second here. Watch this start. This is crazy. Zilich locks up the front tires. Four wide for the lead into turn one. Corey Heim just barely avoids him. Finally got it woed before he got into the pea gravel. You could hear the wheel hop there, too. I'm not sure he didn't miss a downshift there, Michael. And you rely on that transmission to slow you down up that hill. There's on board, you can see the issues. Smoke coming from the tires as he gets it down in a gear and finally makes the turn. Look at that yellow truck running fourth. We talked about this yesterday. Lane Riggs, first road race. <laughs> and, and I talked in the open about 38, 38, 38. <laughs> The, the, that truck's the only one that's won here at this racetrack, and can he make that uh, be the case again today? Yeah, no pressure, right? This poor kid, Michael, you said it, no no road courses. We're, we're not just talking about the truck series. In his whole life, he's never run a road course. So, Taylor Gray coming to pit road. Taylor Gray coming out coming pit, to pit road. road. Uh, Pass through penalty I for wonder, the 17. I wonder, we have to stay in line till we get to the start finish line. They were without question three wide when we got to the start finish line, and that was Taylor Gray was deemed to be the one that made that mistake. Now, there is communication with the tower. As soon as something happens out on track, you break a rule. You find out right away through text message. They have pictures of it. They know that you're going to have a pass through. Connor Zilich flat spotted those tires. He is in his pit box, Amanda. Jamie, the crew is getting to work on the seven. The left front is completely the tires almost off of the wheel there. His team has reminded him that this is a long race, not to worry about it, to stay focused, keep at 80 percent and work up to that 100 percent. So Connor Zillich coming into this, they didn't have to worry about stage points. They were just doing anything to stay out front. How does this change things? Now, now it's all about track position for them. They're going to try to maximize the track position. I don't think it changes their strategy much. They'll probably just stay out through this first stage. And then what 
What, how far could they go? 22 laps is what we talked about. That's how far they could go. Caution laps at the end of the first stage will help that. That's what I was thinking. Some debris. You saw some debris on the racetrack. Top of your screen. Maybe, maybe some of that rubber. Maybe some nice, of that rubber. Nice battle for fourth. Nick Sanchez gets around Corey Heim. Man, there's some good racing here. How about Lane Riggs in the second spot right now? <laughs> it's crazy that he's doing that well. No experience on racetracks like this. Maybe that truck just drives itself. <laughs> One all three times we've been here before. Well, heck, I'm going to try to get in it next year then. <laughs> Dylan Capello is the crew chief, different from the last three years. He was the race engineer, though, so he knows what it takes to make this truck fast, and it's looking good, Jamie. Yes, and I talked to Lane this morning, and he said, you know, I even surprised myself yesterday coming in with zero road course experience, but he said this past week he did spend a lot of time on the Ford simulator with one of the Ford road course specialty drivers, Joey Hand, and he said that was really beneficial. He would get into the simulator, Joey would take a look at it, tell, give him some pointers, he'd then get back into it, try and clean things up, and he said all of that's really translated so well, but it was really a testament to the truck that this team has put together because it's just easy to drive, and he knows right now that he is the weaker link, and he's going to use this race just to really get more experience. A great team effort, no doubt, for that 38. So far looking good, and he's got Ross Chastain right behind him. So some contact here. That's the 76 middle of your screen. He's going to make contact with the right rear quarter panel of the 99 of Ben Rhodes. And look at those trucks behind him scrambling. There's Zillich because of that left front tire off the road. And the contact also created an issue for the 76. That's Spencer Boyd. Boyd has a flat tire and some damage to the suspension, I would imagine. So Connor Zellich shown in the 34th spot right now after his issue and pitting. Tanner Gray continues to lead here. As you see on the left side of your screen, 12 laps make up stage number one. Yeah, I don't think this changes things drastically for that seven truck because now they'll just get on that. Uh, they'll make their second stop just before the end of the second stage. So I think he's right on playing, and I agree with the team. Long way to go. He's very fast. I look, think, I, I'm thinking that seven comes back. Great yep. battle right here for the third position. Corey Heim trying to get around. Ross Chastain. Chastain. Absolutely. You see, that's Dale Quarterly. You see all the damage to that 12 truck of Quarterly. We'll see if he can make it back around the racetrack. Nick Sanchez wants a piece of this action right here. 45, but, Ross Chastain, our only cup driver in the field. We only have a few double duty guys in the field. A couple of um, Timmy Hill and Ty Dillon are running the Xfinity Series race later today. Those youngsters are picking on Ross, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. What about that move by Sanchez? You see him getting to the bottom, shoving Ross out of the way. Now he's going to have to finish the pass on the outside. And he's got Hawksworth right behind in the one car, uh, one truck. Hawksworth is sizing these guys up. He's probably going to be really good on the long run with his road racing experience. Look at this battle side by side. See Sanchez in the preferred line there on the inside. Looks like he's going to make that pass. Caution is out for the first time. We're hearing there's debris on track. There it is. That's from that 12. We saw the flat tire from that 12 truck of Quarterly. It's the trouble for Dale Quarterly as Tanner Gray leads here. Three races in the book, three laps in the books from Circuit of the Americas.
under caution for the first time today. Four laps in. Well, it's been eventful so far. We're jumping all over the place. A lot of action as Tanner Gray continues to lead, leading for the first time in his career on a road course. How about that? And this is going to be a huge break for Silich. We documented the fact that he flat spotted the tires, cut down that tire, made it to pit road. He was over a half lap behind. Now he's going to be able to catch right up with the field. But I think, uh, Phil, we noticed he was back there pedaling it, taking care of those tires that he had just put in. Now he can catch up and see if he can make some moves through the fields. For example, Ben Rhodes up to 17th position from the back. So there's lots of passing opportunities here at Coda. And I think Zilich can, can run past the end of the first stage all the way to his second scheduled pit stop. And he will have the caution laps here, which will help his fuel mileage as well as the caution lap at the stage break. So I think he can go now to lap 23 or 24 like you were talking about. I don't think it changes much for him yeah. other than he doesn't have track position. He's obviously got to get that back. Gotta I don't pass think it trucks. changes strategy at all. <laughs> he'll have more fun now than he did before because he'll get to pass a lot of trucks. Let's listen to Majeski's radio. Yeah, the first I can't believe that no one got called for that restart. I thought it was supposed to be later. Yeah, the initial was supposed to be on the flagman. I, I, he fired as soon as he got out, and nobody said anything. So now it should be the back line. So uh. that was um, the confusion uh, up and down pit road. We're hearing on the radio. You can see as soon as he gets to the line, he fires. And this is a restart zone, typically for restarts. And the rule is you're supposed to stay in line till you get to the start finish line. And obviously, I think we'd have to penalize about half the field for being out of line. So I think NASCAR, I think NASCAR is, is, is saying that because the restart zone is so far back that we're not going to enforce that staying in line, staying in line until they get to the start finish line. We got a report from NASCAR that you got to stay in line until that single red line past the Geico sign, as you see right here on our screen. And that is something different this year. They've moved the restart zone back. So this will be the first restart that we've seen today. And what, what's the idea of that? What's NASCAR trying to accomplish there? Well, with the restart zone a little bit closer to turn one, that we, we've sent, seen so much chaos in turn one. We saw a little bit of that on the initial start. And that's with the restart zone and, and Counter Zillage going way, way back uh, just off of turn number 20. So I think we're going to probably see the same thing. But that was the intent was to not have that such a big jam up when we get up to turn one. And I can't wait to watch this restart. Start, because we're going to have a jam up when we get down to turn one. Wait a minute. We're trying to do away with that jam up. It's not happening, as you see. Connor Zilich, they continue the, working on this truck under the hood. And you see the NASCAR official there showing the team one to go. Yeah, they will give these teams one to go back on the back side of the racetrack. They don't necessarily get it at the start finish line. Zilich, do you think he might have uh, rubbed that sway bar arm off the left front? That, that will hurt him if that's the case. Something they're working in that left front area. And when he drove all the way back on that flat tire, things were dragging, obviously. Something was amiss underneath the hood. Beautiful shots all weekend long. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Powering the race from green flag to the checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Beautiful uh, shots we loved, especially on the restarts. Mm. Overhead, going into turn one, nothing better. There's the choose. It takes about four minutes to run a caution lap here, so that's why the officials are trying try to hurry things up. That's why they give them one to go. That's why they choose over on the back side of the racetrack, so we don't have to run an extra caution lap each time at, at four minutes. It's hard to see there, but... There is a little arrow right there in the middle that they're all going around to choose, just like we see normally at every other racetrack. So let's take a look at the old restart zone from last year and the previous two years since we've run here. And you see the new restart zone push back quite a bit. Yeah, they think they would be a little bit more spread out when they got up to turn one. That was the idea behind that. We'll see how uh, how it's going to work here on this. Trying to avoid chaos, is it, that what well, you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I think we're going to, as Michael said, we're going to have it anyway. <laughs> NASCAR polls the drivers and asks them what their opinion is on where that line should be. And they go off of feedback from those guys to see if how they can might maybe improve. And it's so close to turn number 20 as Zillich is still on pit road, so close to turn 20 that most of the field will actually be in a turn in the straightaway between 19 and 20. So that theoretically should spread them out a little bit more. And you can see a lot of work going on, on the left front, some suspension damage, I suspect, after that tire 
flat, went flat and he drug it all the way back to the pit area. So NASCAR just warned all drivers, all teams reminded them of the new restart zone. So we'll see that, get a good glimpse of it here as they make their way around. Coming through turn 19, warming up those tires. Wow, I just cannot believe Connor Zilich. Nobody saw that one coming. He was just lights out in qualifying yesterday. Now he sits on pit road as the rest of the field gets ready to come around for this first restart. He wants to stay on the lead lap. It's not going to happen, Jamie. He's still sitting on pit road. And here they come. Tanner Gray, Lane Riggs. Nice looking restart there, guys. Side lot, by lot, side up the hill. Yeah, a lot tidier than that first initial yes. start. Look at that dive into the corner on his brother. Look at Corey Heim. Well, Corey Makes it Heim. three wide at the front. Here comes Nick Sanchez, four wide, fighting for the same real estate. <laughs> no chaos at all, right, Michael? And they stay three wide. Now they're down to two, and it's Corey Heim with the advantage. Lane Riggs battling for that lead. Heim just really aggressive on the start, way down low and got the lead. Look at Tanner Gray in the 15, gave up that lead there, battling with Ross Chastain in the 45. Todd Majeski, the 98, there he is, right behind this group. Hawksworth in the one. So much goes on in these laps, just mechanical problems, Michael. We heard a lot of them in the last few years racing here, just how you have to take care of your truck because you're so aggressive. Well, you can see how hard that would be, Jamie, the way they hop the curbs and all the shifting that you have to do. This is as much as these guys have ever seen on a circuit. Three wide getting in turn number 11. Four wide back there getting in oh, turn 11. And Friesen is around. Friesen oh, he saved it. Sideways. Nice. Wow. Nice save. See, Matt. See Matt There's Kraft on that bright yellow truck. Three wide now. That's Ben Rose. Stephen Parsons in the middle of the 75 Spring Rates truck. That's a battle back there for 13th. So Ben Rhodes making some moves from the back to mid-pack right now. He turned 12. He likes his truck with four springs in it. <laughs> <laughs> improved, improved the handling immensely, says Ben Rhodes, as he leads that gaggle. And that moves Ben up into the top 15, so Rich can change it. Turn a page on his playbook now. Those playbooks are thick. They're, they're, their playbooks are thicker than Larry Mike Reynolds' playbook here, <laughs> trying to figure out what moves to make. And it all it all varies, and, and, it, and it's fluid. If you run fast as Ben is right now, maybe he goes up there and gets some stage points. Let's get an update on Connor Zilich. Amanda. Well, you're looking at on the ground right there is a sway bar arm that came off of Connor Zilich's truck. They were diligently working down here to get him back on track. Brian Patty just telling him, hey, you're one lap down. Hit your marks. But they were pretty calm over the radio and taking in the moment. Great to see that seven back on track. Thanks, Amanda. Lane Riggs, the 38, off the pace. We've got trucks around. Marco Andretti got hit right there. You see... Stewart freezing, and we have a truck stopped right in the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, that's turn 20, right the last corner prior to the start-finish line. Lane Riggs is stalled on the front straightaway. The 20 is also stalled. Vicente that's been, Salas. He's also stalled. I think he was involved in that spin. He's got it refired now. But, but I think this is going to be the caution that Connor Zilich needs. As you see the action here, issues for the 38. Connor Zilich is the only truck one lap down. That means he's going to get his lap back right now. So Connor Zilich back on the lead lap here. I don't understand what happened in the 38. It didn't look like there was any contact. He just slowed. We could have broke a transmission. There, there's many mechanical things we've talked about. We just talked about it, right? How yeah, fuel pump in. A number of things could, yeah. have, could have gone wrong. See Daniel die on the inside of Stuart Friesen. That's where the contact that sent Stuart around. Lane Riggs is still creeping up the front straightaway. If he can get that thing turned left, we might stay green. And he does. He's off the racing line. Oh, so, bummer for Lane Riggs. Connor Zilich won't get his lap back right now. No. Still got six laps left in this stage. He's in I'd the say it's a transmission or a gear issue, maybe, because it looks like he's got it in reverse. And it works in reverse, yes. Yeah, so that is not the big break that Zilich needs. All right, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. That's one way to do it. All right, stop it there. What's your voltage read? It's not lost power. An alternator probably went bad, or battery. That's why they're dragging the left side of the truck. Jamie, what's going on with that 38? 
Well, he said that he lost all power after he wheel hopped it. When it sat back down, everything just shut off. And he said as soon as he gets it fired, when he feels any sort of vibration, that's when it shuts off again. So they certainly have an issue that they're going to have to address here. Hate to see that. The 38 truck has just been the standout. Last three straight years, that truck has gone to victory lane. The size of this racetrack allowed NASCAR to keep this race under green and not throw that caution. We are on an oval anywhere else. That truck sat there for as long as it did. That's going to bring out a caution. Not here. And we like that. Just five laps to go here in stage number one. So Corey Heim, the leader. There's Nick Sanchez in second. Ross Chastain behind him. Ty Majeski and Tanner Gray, your top five. Jack Hawksworth in that one is in six. Guys, didn't the 19 of Christian Eckes start in the back? Yes, he did. Do you see along where he's with running ben, right along now? Along with Ben Rhodes. These boys are on a yeah. move. <laughs> Eckes up to seventh. Is that a problem for that was Daniel Dye, Daniel wasn't Dye it? Dye going slow. Daniel's definitely off the pace. Still under power, but off the pace. Yeah, you could tell there. Got a flat tire, maybe? Is it just trying to do his best to stay out of the way of his other competitors? The 76, Spencer Boyd. Yeah, he's already three laps down. Right yeah. now, we're showing Thad Moffat one lap down, running ahead of Connor Zilich. So Connor Zilich is not in the free pass position right now. It's getting crowded up there. What about the Bama buggies coming to the party? Off-roading it a little bit in that truck. <laughs> Chase Purdy saying, I'm here to race, too. Taylor Gray, he had that penalty early. He's on the march forward. This is good racing. Tight all, pack here. All for that eighth, ninth, and tenth position. Look 88 at that. and Matt Crafton. Great run last week, picking up right where he left off. Three wide. wide four, maybe four, four wide. wide for a second. <laughs> <laughs> this is good stuff. Oh, a little contact between the 75 of... Stephen Parsons in the 17 of Taylor Gray. Ben Rhodes gets it. He'll take over that ninth spot. Congratulations to Ben Rhodes and his wife, Caitlin. She gave birth to a little baby girl on Wednesday morning, Annabelle. Ben felt a little guilty that he was out here getting some sleep. I said, don't <laughs> tell her how well you're sleeping out here. I take it back. I and we got problems on the 17, Taylor Gray. That's from that contact, I believe. Quite a bit. That, yep, you see that, that fender rub. Right front fender in on the tire. He'll have to come to pit road. He's going to come. That's not going to be that far out of the realm of his possible strategy as well. Well, it's been an eventful day for the 17, no doubt. Matt Crafton wants to pick up another spot. Chase Purdy. There's the damage on that 17 truck. They'll have to pull that out. They can overcome all this. It's been a rough start, but he's got a lot of speed. And this is certainly something they can overcome. Let's take a look back at that contact. Well, there's a lot of contact right there. Yeah, pick your corner, and then yeah. you could say that was a contact or, or not. They've you, all got a little bit. Yes, I think 17 and, and the 75 got together. Hey, these stages aren't very long. These guys are battling for those points. You finish in the top 10, you do get points. Grand and fingers Grand around. Finger around. He writes the ship. Lane Riggs still out there, so he obviously worked out his issues. And that, that's something right there that can change your strategy. You go for a spin outside the top 10, you might come to pit road right now and get your stop done. As you see Matt Crafton working over Chase Purdy. That's a battle for, I think that's a battle for the 10th position right now. Great battle. Crafton just took over the 11th spot right there, just ahead of him as Stephen Parsons making his first Truck Series road course start. Yeah, local sponsor, Trophy Tractor on board, yeah, the 75 got a, truck. Got a couple local sponsors on board. Going to run 10 to 12 races this year, doing a really nice job. And you see the contact right there that sent Grant Enfinger around. Maybe the five of Dean Thompson. Dean Thompson involved. Nice thing about this is so many of these corners are so slow. We see these trucks spin. It's not going to flat spot those tires no faster than they're going. All right, we talked about the different strategies. Guys, the, the pit window is open, so we got to keep our eyes on. The and here he right comes. Here. Yeah. here he comes. Commitment. Corey Heim will bring it down. See, that yellow line is where the speed starts. You have to be at pit road speed at that yellow line. 
looks like Jack Hawksworth following him down pit road. So Nick Sanchez will take over the lead. Jamie. They also are telling Corey High, make sure you stay left when you come down pit lane because there's also some debris down here as well. But this was a planned early stop for this number 11 team. They knew they were going to give up stage points to do this, but they're going for the race win. And they ultimately feel like they've got a really solid truck. He doesn't want any changes, Amanda. There's also a planned stop for Ross Chastain. He wanted more grip in that truck. It was for tires and fuel. And for Ty Majeskity, it is a brand new road course truck this weekend for the operation. Making it look good out there for Ty Majeski as well. Connor Zilich is probably holding his breath right now. He's moved into the free pass position, but with all these stops and people slowing on the track, that could change quickly. But I'm going to tell you what about Connor Zilich. The last two laps, the fastest two laps of the race. So if he gets lucky and gets this break and gets his lap back right now, he becomes our favorite again, yeah. Phil, even after all he's been through. And I think he stays out and tries to let everyone come to pit road and reach. Well, he has, still has to restart behind the lead lap trucks, though. They're not all going to come to pit road, though. So yeah. Michael, I like what you're selling there. No, it's it's real. I think <laughs> it's, what I'm selling you is real, and he's really fast. I think he's they really figured fast. out his issues, and that's the good news. So definitely not out of the race just yet. As Michael speculated, he he drugged the sway bar arm off, and they had to they had to replace that. They did a really nice job doing Very it, nice. and only losing one lap. Nick Sanchez continuing his solid start to the season. He's Illich is almost a full track behind Sanchez plus a lap. I love this track map. It really gives you an idea, a visual of what you're looking at, where the leader is. Connor Zilich in the seven, who we keep talking about. I'm just really impressed with what Christian Eckes and Ben Rhodes have been able to do. Eckes in the fourth spot, Ben Rhodes up to sixth. Obviously, some good trucks. I, I, I don't know that I've ever seen anybody that much faster than the rest of the field like Zillage is right now. I just pointed to the scoring monitor, Jamie, and Phil and I both looked at it in disbelief. <laughs> he was three seconds faster than the leader last time by. He's just got so much pace. I feel like this is yesterday all over again. You guys were looking at each other saying the same thing about how fast that truck was. But Brian Patty has his work cut out for him. He's got to figure out how to get that truck back on the lead lap. Then he's a contender for the win again. As you mentioned, right now, he is in that free pass position, and we're just a couple laps away from the caution for the but, stage break. But Jamie talked about it. so much action. There's stuff happening everywhere. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's got to hold his breath and see if he can remain in that position. And Tyler Ankrum, we have talked about him every single race this year. Comes over to this new team, and he's just been lights out. He's a point leader, right? The Tyler point Ankrum. leader? He can dance? I mean, he can do it all. Well, in order to be a great road racer, you've got to have good footwork. And we saw he's amazing on the dance floor. <laughs> Mike, that reminds me of someone else on the dance floor. Did he ask you for any <laughs> lessons before that dancing thing? Yeah, we talked. Did you? Good. Keep your eyes up. Don't look at your feet. All right, being told the 45 of Ross Chastain too fast exiting. See it right there highlighted the penalty. Nick Sanchez, three and a half second lead right now. Just two to go. Christian Eckes has made his way up into the top five from starting at the back of the field. Ben Rhodes, sixth. And I got an update for you, Connor Zilich fans. The next truck uh, that would go a lap down would be the 17 of Gray after that unscheduled pit stop. Yeah, and he, has, got a, he has speed. He's got a lot of pace, so yeah, I think that yeah. he's going to be safe on that cause. As long as no one runs off the road running near the back, I believe it's going to work out yeah. for him. But Christian Eckes riding this wave of momentum. Goes back to Bristol last week. A little bit of redemption for him, a huge win. Saw his mom and dad in the lobby airport or the lobby of the hotel, and they were all smiles. They said, we finally got what we needed. We're ready to go race for a championship. So good. That young man has won five times since the start of 2023 when he came over to McAnally Racing. Jamie. I'm talking to Nick Sanchez. I mentioned at the start of the show, this now is third truck series race on a road course. The first one was here last year, and then we went to Mid-Ohio. And between the two of those, one thing that he did switch on this road course truck was the size of the steering wheel. He ran a 15-inch wheel here last year, switched it to 14, and it worked so well for him that that's what he's got in it for this season. 
Jason here at Coda, and he said he feels like even though it's the same truck, he feels like he's driving a different truck because he just has so much more maneuverability behind the wheel. I like that, the details that these guys are looking for comfort on a road course and they can change it up and try new things that really help them. Final lap of this stage, we know the pit road is closed, so. Do you see that hop? <laughs> How big of a shortcut he took, and that's our leader. <laughs> Nick Sanchez looking for his first stage win of the season. Had four last year. He was the winner at Daytona. First career win. Off to a great start for him. As he makes his way around. Right now, Connor Zillich still being shown the first truck one lap down. So Brian Patty only has to hold his breath for another minute or so. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he's doing, too. Solid run again for Matt Crafton, too. You remember solid at Bristol last week, and now another great run here at Coda. How about this battle? It's for that 10th and final spot in this stage. It's all about the points. You get one for finishing 10th. Ty Dillon wants to get it done. He's full time this year. Good to see Jack Wood up there battling for that stage point as well in the 91 truck. Connor Zilich hanging on. When that caution falls, if he stays where he is, he will get back on the lead lap, and then we can see what he's made of, what this truck has. I've already seen what he's made yeah. of, Jamie. <laughs> it's it's serious, and the lap times he's putting down, lap after lap, we, we might be happy he had a little bit of an issue early as TV <laughs> folk because we've got to see so much drama and action around that truck. He is so fast, but Nick Sanchez right now is where he wants to be. I wonder if the caution laps that we've had, Michael Sanchez is going to come down to win this stage, if that will change his strategy for some of these other people to maybe forego stopping at, uh, it, and around this stage break. And you see it there. Nick Sanchez picks up his first stage win of the season. Caution will come out. Pit stops coming up next.
Welcome back to the Expel 225. Stage number one is in the books. About ready to see some pit stops here, gentlemen. Let's take a look at the points we talked about, the top 10. Do you get points? Nick Sanchez, a valuable 10 there, all the way down to Ty Dillon was battling for that spot. He picks up one point. Yeah, Akis and Rhodes get points after starting at the back. Now, now the fun starts. Now the fun starts. The free <laughs> what, pass is What do you mean in now? <laughs> I've had a good time all the way up until now. This is good stuff. I, I'm assuming that most everybody that has not stopped yet, which is the top 11 trucks, will pit. I mean, they don't necessarily have to. They pit. don't have to. They can make it to halfway. Here comes Connor. He's got the free pass, so he's. That's. That's about how it looked at Bristol last year, uh, last week when somebody had fresh tires in that cup race. Well, I'm afraid that's what it's going to look like in this truck race when he gets his uh, flat back. He's going to be driving through the field like that. He, he said, I, you know, he went by the leaders and said, I'll see you all in a little bit. I'll be back. He gets to have a little bit of fun now back on the lead lap. So stage number two coming up will be 14 laps long. This Here they stage come. one was 12. And they're all making their way toward you. Ben Rhodes in his box, Amanda. Yeah, Jamie, you got to remember he started from the rear of this race all the way up into the sixth position as he enters into his pit box. Said that the truck feels much better than it did yesterday in practice. Should be just a normal stop for Ben Rhodes. And then onto the 15 of Tanner Gray. Said that they're losing grip laterally as they run. There will be some adjustments there, Jamie. Well, for the number two of Nick Sanchez, he said there at the end, he was just cruising. He let everybody else burn off their tires. He saved his to make it to the end of that stage. He's happy with what's underneath him. But number 18 of Tyler Anchor. You guys talked about up in the booth of him leading the points right now. And he said, that's really our strategy for today. He said, I don't have a truck capable of winning. I've got a truck capable of finishing in the top 10. It's going to be about staying smart. They just pulled off some tape there uh, to make sure that he can get some air to those brakes. Jamie. All right, some fresh tires, some adjustments, some fuel. And I like that strategy. If you don't think you have a race winning truck, why not get points in the first stage, in the second stage? Accumulate, accumulate those points. A little issue on pit road here. Stop, Ooh, stop, stop, stop. Dale Quarterly and Tyler Ooh, Ankrum. So close to Matt Mills, front changer and Jackman. They're able to avoid major contact for Ankrum. I don't think he'll have to come back. Somebody's See? dragging something. Maybe a on piece pit of road. side skirt, it looked like. Trucks filing off pit road. Wow. Nice reset here. Let's catch our breath and go back yes, at it. Yes, Corey Heim will be the leader when we come back and drop the green once again from Circuit of the Americas. I think we're going to see a little bit more of this, guys.
One of the most beautiful racetracks we go to all year. Circuit of the Americas, everywhere you look, stars and stripes, having a little fun. Boys and girls turn left and right all weekend long. Three series, we've got the Xfinity series coming up after us. Of course, the Cup series tomorrow. There's Connor Zilich. All eyes are on him. Back in 31st. Yeah, the key is on the lead lap, though. On yes. the lead lap, he is still in contention. So Corey Heim, Jack Hawksworth going to restart on the front row. Raja Karuth with a lot of damage, and Stefan Parsons right next to him. Dean Thompson, Jake Garcia. Look at Jake Garcia up there. Good for him. Good run. Yes, sir. Ma'am. <laughs> yes, Michael. Nice jump by Corey Heim. Jack Hawksworth right there with him. Trying to pass behind him, fanning out three, four, five wide into turn one. Will they make it work this time around? Wow, what a dive by Jack. Made it work, too. He's got the lead. Jack Hawksworth. First career truck race to the front he goes. Raja Karuth in third there. We saw damage on the front of that truck, but he's got a solid run going. Look at his nose. You just wonder how, much, how many of those hood pins are compromised. Look at this. Great shot. Working its way through the S's. Beautiful. Corey Heim battling his teammate Hawksworth. For the lead. Corey Himes had to learn this craft of road course racing. Jack Hawksworth, it's what he grew up doing. It's what he does all the time. Sports car racer. He raced in the IndyCar series. How about Raja side by side, side with Corey Himes? Side by side. Look at Raja. Look at the damage on the nose of that race truck. Still making it work. Look at Stefan Parsons. Stefan putting it in there, trying to grab that third spot while that battle's going on. But here comes Dean Thompson in the black and blue truck. He's up beside Parsons. Yeah, he lost a little momentum there trying to battle that duo out there for the third spot. Raja Karuth in the 71. Top 10 all four races this season, putting on a show here despite his truck having some damage. He moves back to the third spot. As Look at that. Heim. I know. I can't believe that hood isn't blowing it, up. At least two of the hood pins, I think, are damaged. There's only four. You can see four. But that one on the outside is holding, so maybe just one hook pin is not holding anymore. Three of the four, it should stay there, I would think. But you mentioned speeds of 170 miles an hour on the fastest part of the racetrack. I don't, I don't, I don't see how that's happening. Usually they blow up. Connor Zillich up five positions since the restart. Jack Hawksworth out front. This has got to be fun for him. This is so different than anything he's raced here or on any road course before, yet he's been so helpful the last couple of years to his teammates at Tricon Garage. Look at all that mess Zillage is looking at ahead of him. <laughs> Jumps to the inside of three wide situation. That's Taylor Gray, the 17. Connor Fartuck in the 22. See what Zillage does as he gets up to the top of the hill into Ooh. turn one. He dives in there. See the 22 trying to hang on the outside. There's Timmy Hill. Just has to be patient to keep the, keep the fenders on that truck. I guarantee you that's all Brian Patty's been preaching since what happened on the first lap. Be patient, kid. We're going to get it back. We're still going to win this race. So many shifts each lap for these drivers. I love this shot of Connor Zilich as he Man handles that wheel. Wouldn't you much rather shifting? Try to slow a guy down and speed him up. Absolutely, <laughs> a lot easier to do that. And I think that's what well, that's what his crew chief Brian Patty is doing right now. Just said, take your time. We'll work our way through this field. battle for the lead right here. Corey Heim to the front. No, no surprise that Corey Heim made his way to the front. Really nice pass. Corey in the simulator. Spent a lot of hours. I believe he said 10 to 12 hours he spent just on this race alone. Trying to figure out exactly what they're going to feel. He said it's very similar to it. Jamie. Well, for Jack Hawksworth, you know, one of the things that they just did on that restart, a little bit of a different approach than what we normally see here in the truck series. Rather than the team calling the green flag for him, he said, you do this all the time. You're the road racing master. We're going to stay quiet on the radio, let you listen to the number 11 here when he goes, and that's when you can fire. But make sure you don't fire off before he does, and it seemed to work out for him. Yes, it did. These trucks 
You talked about mechanical issues and you can see as you watch this race develop and go along how many bumps and bangs these suspension parts are taking, how many shifts the transmission is going through. It's amazing. Almost 30 a lap, almost 30 shifts a lap. You can't forget last year coming out of turn 20 on the last lap of the race, Ben Rhodes drive shaft drops right out on the racetrack. He limps his way to salvage a top 10, but so hard, so rough on these trucks. Here's a nice battle right here. Jake Garcia, Matt Crafton come down the front stretch and climbing that hill into turn one. What a great shot right here. Mm -hmm. Teammates Crafton and Garcia. Ben Rhodes back there in the 99 and 13th spot right now. He's on the move. Zilich up into the top 20. A lot of bumping and banging. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has been left completely alone. Holes off road. We got it all from Circuit of the Americas. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Racing live from Austin, Texas. Corey Heim continues to lead here in stage number two, working lap number six of 14 here. And we had a whole gaggle of trucks during the break get together. We're told this is in turn number 12. This is battling for the top 15 position. You see the 77 gets in, maybe gets into the back of the 18. And the 18 got into the seven. You see the seven on the top of the screen there. Connor Zilich around 
Yeah, that may be Chase Purdy getting in the back of the of Tyler Ankem in the 18. And then that punted him, maybe, as you see the 18 swinging wide. As Illich was knocking on the door of the top 15, now he's back outside the top 20. No damage, didn't look like he just punted it. It, it, it didn't, wasn't no accident. Add to the storyline. Nice and smooth, regroup, level head. Got plenty of speed. Well, the fun is just starting for Connor Zilla today. Believe it or not, he has another race right after this. There's going to be a plane waiting for him to take him to Pensacola for the ARCA East game. So you talk about the day ahead for this 17 year old, the mindset that it takes to pull this off. Well, it's he's, incredible. His mind is working overtime right now, trying to pick his way. Like you said, Bill, he made up to about the top 15. I think he's running 16th, and now he's just having to work his way back by all the trucks he just passed. So, Michael, are you saying that the seven trucks probably going to win the award for most trucks passed today? Yes, that's for sure. And I would not be surprised for us to be talking about him on the last lap as well. He's got a lot to learn, obviously, racing against these guys he's never raced with before. But this, these early lessons are so valuable. And if he can overcome them, this race will be one of the biggest races of his career in NASCAR for sure. Connor Winning the Zilich. 24 hours of Daytona is probably the biggest race of his career so far in general. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's awesome. The Rolex win Sebring in the same year. He's only 17 years old. Talked to him this morning and he said, I'll probably run about 60 races this year. And you're Love talking that. everything from he's running his TA2, so he's running Trans Am, he's running ARCA LMP2, trucks. LMP2, LMP2. Some Xfinity, he said right now he has three truck races planned, but he's hoping to add a few more to that. So he is racing, he said, every single week. So that mentality of just get in it and rip, and you don't have time to think about it, overthink and get nervous. Good battle for 11th here. That's Stefan in the 75 and Ben Rhodes in the 99. Right in front of this battle is the 88 of Matt Kraft. And we're hearing, so you see Matt ducking down pit road, exceeding track limits through ah. the S's. We talk about that at the very top of the show when we told you, showed you the track map. So exceeding track limits, basically that means all four tires are outside of the racing line, outside of those rumble strips. You have to have one tire on and you're good. So they've got cameras set up there and they will post you if they see that you cut the course at all. And you saw it there, the 88 had to come down pit road. Yeah, and remember turns three to turn six. We see these drivers way outside yeah. the rumble strips at other parts of the racetrack, but that's okay. It's Corey Heim, Jack Hawksworth. Ty Majeski, Dean Thompson with a great run going in. Christian Eckes, who started in the back after changing his transmission, he's in fifth. Around lap number 19. Remember, we're going to see a lot of these drivers and teams pit around lap 23. Maybe the guys up front can pit as late as 24, Jamie Howe. Well, for Christian Eckes, you mentioned he had to start at the back after changing that transmission. When we got to the end of the first stage, he was already right there knocking on the door of the top 10. He restarted in 11th, but what he was able to learn in coming up through the field in that first stage was not to overwork those tires. When he came in for the pit stop to take on four new ones, he did have a flat spot on that right front. The team has been able to relay that information. He felt the damage caused, and now he knows where the limit is. That's only going to help him as we get closer to the end. You know, we saw Nick Sanchez win that first stage, but currently the truck that's furthest forward of the ones that pitted at the end of the stage is this 98 of Tom Majeski. So he's had a nice restart, got a lot of speed, been watching his lap time. He's matching the leaders. So this is a fast truck. I feel like every time we go to a road course, Ty Majeski is in the hunt right there in the top three, top four at the end of these things. And he doesn't have a background in road no. racing. He's one of the best short track racers we have in the country. Just one of those that put his mind to getting better here, kind of like Tyler Reddick. He wasn't good on road courses, didn't like him, and he kept telling himself <laughs> he didn't like it. And oh, by the way, he flipped that switch one day and said, I need to get better. This is my weakness. And now look at him. He's a favorite every time we go to a road course. When Tyler came to the truck series, he really wasn't very good at restarting because he never shifted in the dirt track racing that he'd done. But man, has he figured it out now. So many tools if you're willing to put in the time and effort. Phil, I think the pit window has is near opening. You talked about strategy and coming to pit road before the end of the stage break. 
I believe in another lap or two, we're going to see some business happen. Yeah, I think so. And I think the advantage to that is versus waiting till lap 23 or 4 is if the caution were to come out in between that right after you come to pit road, then that's going to give you a huge advantage. Nobody else had made their pit stop yet. A couple penalties. Connor Zilich cutting the course in the S's will have a pass through penalty. Also told Nick Sanchez, the two that won stage number one, same thing. So he will have a pass through penalty as well. You see it there. Corey Heim continues to lead here. Six laps to go in stage number two. You won't miss it. We're going side by side. Caution is out for the third time today. And you saw it in side by side. The 33 of Lawless Allen went around. He is stuck. You see him getting that push right there. So what does this mean? How does this mix it up, boys? There are a couple of people came to pit road just prior to the caution. I think maybe the spotter called the crew chief and said, let's come, let's come, because there's a truck stalled on the track. Lawless Allen in the 33. Racing Daniel Dye in the 43. A little bit of contact turns Daniel around as well, but Lawless Allen could not get his truck refired in time. NASCAR brought the caution. I think you're exactly right. The, some of the spotters said, hey, come to pit road now. And we saw Majeski do that. Taylor Gray was another one of the drivers that did that. What a day for Taylor Gray. So many problems, ups and downs, but this is a huge break he might need in order to be able to win this race. the spin by Connor Zillich, but he keeps it running. See Nick Sanchez on the inside. Wow, he leaned on the Jake, Garcia. Of Jake Garcia, but still spun around. Just got in there a little hot. You can see the front end sliding up and yeah. bam, around he goes. And Sanchez trying to make up some lost ground. He had that penalty, he had to pit before that, so he was mired back there. <sighs> It's a lot to keep up with, there, boys. There's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> there's five to go in this stage. I believe we will go back racing, but I think some of those teams that pitted when they felt like the caution was going to come out are in their window. We said we could run about 22 laps. They pitted on lap number 20 and 21 in some cases. So 
I think it's a situation where the, I think they have the option of staying out. And they're going to take advantage of that. Yep. Track position is everything. So Connor Zilich, you guys were talking about those who last pitted. He last pitted on 21 back in 17th. But I believe for Zilich, that was just a pass through. I don't think he stopped. Just a track limit pass through penalty. So pit stops coming up next. Corey Himes led the most laps today with nine. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. I felt like I was on the Goodyear blimp yesterday when I went up to the top of that observation 250, deck. 250 feet. That's Look right. Look at how high that is. And watch the coverage on Fox tomorrow if you want to know how many Carson Hosevars that is. <laughs> I hear he's a little, little scared of heights. If you stock him up, how many is that? <laughs> You and him are about the same size, aren't you? Uh, he's a little bit taller. Is he? Yeah, I'm just amazed how well he fits in the cars, uh, especially these trucks. Last time I drove a truck, I had to drive with my legs crossed because I couldn't, couldn't, ha didn't have any room. Here's some action on pit road. Got some takers. Got a lot of takers coming your way. Amanda, you're up first. You'll see the five of Dean Thompson making his way to us out of that Tricon outfit here racing this weekend. He does have a top 10 this year. He had a good uh, showing at Atlanta. Dean continuing to add on to experience to his resume. It will be a, a normal stop for him, Jamie. And number one of Jack Hawksworth pitting from the number two position. And they were just reminding him, make sure you hit your marks. He was asking the team, make sure you count me in. Remember, this is his very first race in a truck, so a lot of new things overall, though. He's happy with the balance and the performance. Now it's just go time for the number 11 of Corey Heim. This was planned to be their final pit 
stop. It was four tires. We're going to top him off with some fuel. And his crew chief, Scott Zipidelli, just said, give me a good pit stop. That's exactly what happened. Number 18, Tyler Ingram, he also came uh, for some slight adjustments. All right, three laps to go in this stage. Number two, 19 laps overall from Circuit of the Americas. Stay with us. We'll figure it all out after the break. What a day it's been for 17-year-old phenom Connor Zilich from the drop of the green flag. Locks up the front tires getting into turn one, goes for a slide that eventually blew out the left front, had to pit, change the sway bar, and got run into by Tyler Ankrum, spun around. And you know what, Phil? He's still in the game. Still, still on the lead lap, still in the game. Running up just around the top 15, between 15th and 20th. It's going to be fun to watch him pass some trucks. Stuart Friesen on the front row. Look at the 71. Raja Gruth, all that damage, and he's still in the hunt. Making their way out of turn number 20. Be interesting to watch Corey Heim here. He pitted. Can he still go win this stage? Stuart Friesen, Raja Gruth, Ben Rhodes, Tom Majeski, Taylor Gray all ahead of him right now. Look at Ben Rhodes started in the back, trying to make it three, four wide. Jack Hawksworth locks it up. Stuart oh, Friesen Stuart. goes wide. 98, Ty Majeski almost sideways. He saves it. Ben Rhodes to the lead. Three wide. Comes this Corey Heim. Part of the track is so difficult. They did it. Majeski has fresh tires as well. Remember, he got in right as the caution flag waved. What a day for Ben Rhodes. He needs this. It's he been does. a rough start to the season. Talk to him as he was coming to the green in the pre-race and he was very confident about his chances today and look how well he's running but that 
truck behind him, he's strong. Corey Himes led all most of the laps today, led nine laps as he goes side by side to the inside. Corey Heim back to the lead. Ben yeah. Rhodes second. Ty Majeski back there in third. Raja Cruz slips back to fourth. And Taylor Gray, the 17, well, with no quit today. Another one of those drivers like Majeski that got in under the wire when that caution was out. So he has fresh tires as well. Jack Coxworth to the bottom trying to get a position on Tyler Ankle. Ingram goes high. Is that Connor Zilich up to the In a top, top 10? 10? Yes, it is. Right there, that seven truck. Yes, it is. Racing alongside Tanner Gray. Stuart Friesen, we saw him go for a slide on that restart. He's falling back to 10th. Jack Ooh. Hawksworth trying to make that comeback after locking it up in turn one. I think you, you tell Connor Zillich, get how many, every many spots you can without taking any chances. We know the caution's going to come out in another two laps. Racing alongside Tyler Ankrum. For the sixth position. Remember, Kevin Harvick told me that Connor Zillich was the best he's ever seen up breaking on a road course. And that's a huge part of this game. You really got to try to get deep in the corners, but get your truck woe down so you can exit strong. Corey Heim leaves now one lap to go in this stage number two. Majeski's going to take that spot away. About 10 laps fresher tires on Majeski's truck than Ben Rhodes has. Ben Rhodes last pitted lap 13. Ty Majeski lap 21 and Corey Heim had just come in on lap 23. We talked about the varying strategies and I think that little statement you just made, Jamie, shows you all the options there are for these teams. And then you throw in a caution flag right near a stage break, things are going to get mixed up. Saw how fast that five truck was but prior to the pit stop. Now he's battling with Stuart Friesen and Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain back there in the 12th spot. You wonder what happened to Ross Chastain. He's always so solid here, but he had that early penalty that got him mired back. So he's making his move forward, but still in 12th as it stands. Going to jump beside Stuart Friesen to try to grab that spot. I think Dean Thompson, the five, has that last stage point spot right now. Heck of a battle for 10th. Let's get an update on the leader, Jamie. Well, as Corey Heim looks to get these stage points here to win the second stage, you know, I talked to Scott Zipidelli, and this is actually a brand new road course truck for Corey Heim. And you think, you know, why take all of that money and the effort to build a new one? And, and Scott said, it was already part of our plan before we knew the schedule for this season. And he said, my job is to make sure that Corey is where TRD wants him to be. And in order to do that, I need to give him the best equipment possible. That's what Corey has today. And this truck is, uh, we now have damage out on the racetrack, but this truck is amazing. Great truck for the leader, but the 15 Tanner Gray goes around with Ross Chastain as the 11 continues digging, looking for his first stage win of the day. Nick Sanchez got stage win number one. But great point by Jamie. One and only road course this year for the truck series. And they built a brand new race truck. It'll only run here. It's how serious that team is about giving Corey Heim every opportunity to go win this championship this year. First stage win of 2024 for Corey Heim. First on a road course, and look at the battle behind him for third. Jack Hawksworth holds off Ben Rhodes for that third spot. Taylor Gray behind him. Connor Zilich in the sixth spot at the end of stage number two. Corey Heim is your leader.
Just 16 laps to go. <laughs> We've seen stage one, stage two. Here's the stage points earned today. Ty Majeski, big day for him. 18 points. Ben Rhodes starting in the back. He's salvaged some good points. You know, that's about a best case scenario for Ben Rhodes. We talked to him before the race, talked about his strategy, and he's played things out just perfectly to grab all those stage points. He needs it. Tough start to the season for that 99 team. Somebody else that stands out to me, Raja Karuth, last pitted lap eight, and he's coming your way, Amanda. Yeah, Jamie, it's no surprise that he's been complaining about his tires. He's in that first pit box here at Coda. He said that he was struggling with the left front a little bit, especially in timing in that stadium section. But overall, good balance in that truck. So the tires will be the most important thing for Rajai here. And then on the 99 of Ben Rhodes, uh, they, they are going to open the hood of that to fix a little bit of the body damage on the nose, but said that Rich Lucius reminded Ben that, hey, we've got nine points here already today. Our goal was 13, but Ben said, I want to win this. Thing. Jamie? Well, Tyler Anchorman, the number 18 on pit lane now. They have gone ahead and switched out the tires, uh, but there's heavy damage on the front of this car. So he's do, they do have two crew members over the wall right now um, to trying to get this tire off so they can execute some of this damage. And, and they've got the, the hammers out to try and hammer it out. Uh, Bear Bond is at the ready as well. So they've got some work ahead. But to Mark Hillman, the crew chief's point, they've got plenty of time to get it done right, get him back out there uh, before the rest of the field comes back by so much damage to keep up with and and how about i want to give an attaboy to the seven truck and that seven team the, the problems earlier on the start the green flag flew and he went off course they were able to get that truck back fixed up where he needed to be and now connor zillich up there in fifth yeah that sway bar on they changed on that pit stop and only lost one lap i mean that's a fairly major change and they certainly executed that there's connor zillich getting some fresh air underneath that helmet we have a lot more action coming your way today on FS1. The NASCAR Xfinity Series is here in Texas as the future stars of auto racing tackle the tight turns and surprising twists here at Coda. We've seen a lot of that already today. No need Engines. to change the channel, right? That's right. Stay right here on FS1. Engines fire, green flag waves at 5 Eastern. Looking forward to that. Kyle Larson on pole. I'm going to get me a bag of popcorn and find me a seat up in the stands and check out some Xfinity racing here at Coda. That's how much I love this place. I, I wanna... How about from there? Can you watch it from there? <laughs> That's one thing you'll never see me do, Phil. <laughs> I am not getting on that. That thing just goes straight to the ground and ugh. she looks scared to death. Well, she should be. Oh, my goodness. That's the best <laughs> seat in the house. I'm scared for her. You're asking me now that thing to the right. That's my speed right you're there. All over that. I have my popcorn up there. Just enjoying the beautiful views a scene here in Austin circuit of America is that just when you when you get close to this place I just brighten up because of all the visual stimulation you have everything that's here how much fun it is for the fans to be able just to celebrate NASCAR here at Coda such a beautiful facility to drive out here and we stay downtown Austin what a fun place amazing restaurants a lot to do great place to come for a race Hey, it's empty. I think they're waiting for you, Michael. I love that. So we've had four cautions today, seven different leaders, 11 lead changes, 15 laps to go. What do you think, Phil? Well, at the very top of the show, we talked about the seven and the 11, those two young drivers in the front row. Corey Himes' day has been pretty uh, pretty normal, running up front, <laughs> winning stages or whatever, but Connor Zilich has, has any, had anything but a normal stay or a normal race so far. But here he is up there. He's going to restart, I think, in the second row, right behind Ty Majeski. He's got a shot at that. That's a great look for him right now. He's back in contention. His truck's fixed. It's going to be fun to watch. His fastest lap time of the day is 113.52. That's about eight tenths of a second better than anybody else on the track. So it's going to be interesting. Brian Patty, crew chief, veteran, he's going to be preaching still patience. We don't need to get in a hurry here. We've got the truck to win this race. Be patient. And 15 laps is a long time on a road course such as this with 3.4 miles. Well, and there's 20 corners and 15 laps. Yeah. If I do the math correctly, that's a lot. 300. When we're riding on board with Connor Zillich, you see the Austin Hatcher Foundation for Pediatric Cancer. Austin Hatcher died in 2006, and his mom and dad, big race fans, his dad raced. Mom took photos at the racetracks. 
um, they created this foundation to help families and to help those pediatric kids that are going through cancer. They cover their bills. They, they do therapy for them. They do everything. And what they've done and how many families they've helped has been unbelievable. So that, I know it's awesome. a proud moment for them to see him riding on board with Connor Zillage today. Huge restart coming. See Matt Kraft in that bright green truck weaving his tires in, getting ready for this huge restart you talked about, Phil. I always thought that truck was yellow. You boys in your colors. Here we go. Corey Heim leads him once again up the hill. Ty Majeski, Connor Zilich. What can he do? Keep your eye on that outside second row. Guarantee you don't overshoot the corner. <laughs> and he does not do that. Nice and orderly. Corey Heim keeps the lead. Connor Zilich in third. That was a pretty tidy turn one here. It certainly was from what we've seen in the past. NASCAR and the driver is making the decision that those restarts need to be a little bit calmer than five and six wide, and I think they've accomplished just that. Matt Crafton's been impressive. I mean, not just here, but last week, great run for him at Bristol the last couple of weeks, top seven. Yeah, he's told me the other day, he said, there's a lot of fight left in this old man, and he's showing it right now, isn't he? I was talking to his crew down in the garage yesterday, and they were so proud of the effort he put into Bristol last week. Good side-by-side -side battle. That's Christian Eckes, the blue and white truck, trying to get by the 17 of Taylor Gray. I mean, we talk about all the young kids, and they're all running up front right now, but Matt Crafton, 47 years young, out there mixing it up. Stephen Parsons dives on the inside of Dean Thompson. Dean's been solid all day long, having a great run. So is Stephen Parsons. He's not even full time. And to jump in a truck like this and get up to speed with these drivers, he's been in the mix. What about Nick Sanchez? He sees these guys side by side. Will he make it three wide? I bet so. He's Sanchez. certainly considering it, isn't he? <laughs> what a day for him. He wins stage number one. He's gone around a couple times. He's had a penalty. He's had damage. And here he is putting the move on the five. That'll give him the eighth spot. There's Grant in bigger than nine truck. We haven't talked a lot about Grant because he spun around. Battle for second. Connor Zilich is trying to get it. Snuck in there, didn't he? And he takes it from Ty Majeski. One more spot to go. This will be fun because I know we all were in the garage this morning. We've talked to Corey Heim. What do you think of Connor? And talk to Connor. What do you think of Corey? And they oh, both said the same thing. Smoke? smoke. Oh, no. Connor Zilich. It's heavy. I think he must have, he made some contact, I think, with Majeski on that pass. I don't know. Didn't look that bad. Keep watching. Maybe it'll clearance itself. Yeah. We see that every now and then. A little bit. We're fine. Yeah. Hawks All right, refocus here. I'll get a look at it when you come by, but refocus. You're driven away. And that's Connor's radio, but you see clearly there's still a lot of smoke as he heads up into turn one. Let's take a look at the replay. What happened here? Squeezed in a... Yeah, definitely contact right there. That's what caused that tire rub. As, as Michael said, it may clearance itself. <laughs> what about all the contact we've seen? I talked about hopping curbs and shifting <laughs> gears. Well, I forgot about running into each other. And that's been pretty much commonplace here today. And remember, these truck bodies are metal. They're not uh, composite material like the Xfinity cars and the cup cars. You get a sharp edge, it'll cut that tire. It's been contact for about everybody in the field except our leader. His truck looks as perfect as it did when they unloaded it. Corey Hahn just ran his fastest lap of the race, a 213.44 that last lap, which is the fastest lap that we've seen this entire race, faster than what Zillich had done earlier. Yeah, by a tenth of a second. Corey Heim says, bring it on, yeah, kid. Yeah, come get me. Come yeah. get me. <laughs> I want to see some of that. Corey Himes, a road course winner, did it last year at Mid-Ohio. Zillich, well, this is his first career truck series start, so... I don't know. That's still a lot of smoke. You're thinking about three and a half miles of smoke and a tire around here. It's not going to take long for that thing to give up. It just, it just doesn't look like there's much damage. I, maybe it's just smoking on the sidewall, which would, would be, probably be better. What do you do if you're the crew chief at this point, knowing you have 13 laps to go and it's it's not a normal 13 laps. We're 3.4 miles for one lap here. I think you, if you pit, you, you, you can't win the race. No, you stay out. Stay out and hope it clearances his health. It's all about winning the race. No points for this team. The same truck that Kyle Busch runs five times this year. He was in it last week. 13 laps to go. Corey Hyman stepped it up. There you see crew chief Brian Patty trying to get a 
assessment on what's going on with that truck. At least what we talked about, guys, at the top of the show is coming to fruition. Yes, it is. So the one and the, the seven and the 11. It looks bad. No more mistakes. No more mistakes. Nineteen pass through. Christian Eckes made his way down pit road for a penalty. There he is. That's Here. track limits penalty. Turn three in the S's. He exceeded track limits. That's a penalty drive through. And you know, Patty said no more mistakes. Every lap you risk cutting the limits or exceeding the limits through the S's. So just don't do that. You keep your head on your shoulders because if a mistake happens now, it's too late to overcome it. Well, Corey Heim has led the most laps today, 14 laps and counting. Can he hold off? Connor Zilich, 12 laps to go here. You won't miss a thing. We're going side by side. Beautiful afternoon of racing here at Circuit of the Americas, just outside Austin, Texas. 11 laps to go, and the 11 continues to lead. He's holding off Connor Zilich by a little over four seconds. Ty Majeski behind him, Jack Hawksworth, and Taylor Gray, your top five. <laughs> we talked about Corey Heim stepping it up the last two laps. He's been faster than Connor Zilich and has run the fastest laps of the race. So. He felt the pressure coming and he stepped up and said, uh, not so fast, son. Really, really fast laps. Several laps now down under the two, two minute, 14 second lap. If he could just hang on, if he finishes second in his debut race. I guarantee he'll be disappointed, but it'll be a, quite an accomplishment for what all he's been through. Yeah, this wasn't an easy one by no means. But I think that just shows you how tough our truckers are. When you come in here, your road course expert, Corey Heim says, I'm not very, I wasn't very good here last year. I finished six. I was six. <laughs> and that's not, that's not where I want to be. And then to step up and run the lap times he's running right now. As Corey Heim makes his way down the front stretch, this is the Craftsman 10 laps to go. Craftsman, such a great partner to the truck series. Perfect sponsor for our trucks. They really are. 
Let's get an update on our leader, Jamie. I love the calmness that's on the radio for Corey Heim coming from both his spotters as well as his crew chief, Scott Zipidelli. And what they're telling him right now is there's only 10 laps to go. You're doing great. Remember, though, every single lap, this is what they're telling him. Remember, do not cut the course. They talk about the risk versus the reward in doing so. And they're saying right now there is zero reward because they're throwing penalties at everybody. Great information for Corey Heim as the leader. But you guys, look how perfect his truck is. I mean, there is not a scratch on it. See Scott Cipidelli. These two together, they're they're magic. I mean, literally, like you guys said, Corey said, ah, we weren't very good here last year, finished sixth. Well, they went to work. They've been in the simulator, built a brand new race truck, did everything it took. They've led the most laps today. Can they hang on and get the win here? It'd be a big moment for this team. Another sub 214 second lap for Corey Heim. He's doing it lap after lap, Michael. So this is between 19 and 20. You see the alternate start finish line we used for qualifying. I don't believe I'd throw the caution for that. Hard to tell what it is, but. Brake hose, I think. He says the brake hose. I know one guy that doesn't want to see a caution. For <laughs> Corey Hine. Corey Hine. <laughs> Stock them all up. No telling what will happen. But I'm telling you, this is impressive. A little pressure here from Ty Majeski on Zillich for that second spot. He told Zillich, don't make any more mistakes. Be smart out there. He had a lot of lot of smoke, maybe baby in those tires a little bit. Ty Majeski putting it to him here, trying to take over the second spot, and he does. Connor's not going to give it up that easily. This is a great battle for second. After all this today, Connor Zilich jumping in a plane, flying to Pensacola, Florida, as we heard earlier. He'll run the ARCA East race tonight. NASCAR just said Stephen Parsons in the 75 truck, running in the top 10, exceeding track limits over in the S's. Yeah, tough break. Had a great run going. Good battle here between Hawksworth and Taylor Gray. And right behind them, there's battles everywhere. <laughs> Matt Crafton, Nick Sanchez just behind them, coming up the hill. Dean Thompson still hanging there in the top 10. Stuart Friesen in ninth. Wow, Stewart's had a heck of a day. We yeah, saw him yes. about spin out once, missed turn one once, and still battling along inside the top 10. How about the season for Taylor Gray, who's running up in the top five once again? He's been impressive, the kid has. Jeff Hensley is crew chief. That's been the difference this year, I think, for these two. They just think the world of each other. Young driver, very veteran crew chief. They're off to a solid start, and they've had their hiccups today, their issues. They've been all over the place. Look at that, 30th at the end of stage one, <laughs> but he's right back at it. No quit. Taylor Gray right now in fifth position. Let's get an update on the 17, Amanda. Yeah, and since Atlanta, Jeff Hensley has really been talking about the maturity of 18-year-old Taylor Gray. He's also given him the nickname Haas. When I asked where did that came from, and Jeff Hensley said, well, that's what my dad called me. Haas. <laughs> I like it. He's having a birthday next, next week, right? Is it Monday? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to turn 19. <laughs> a lot of racing ahead for that young man. Mm -hmm. Moving on up. Look at the damage. That's sort of the picture of the day. Yes, no doubt. Fenders caved in galore. You see Ty Dillon. Excuse like, me. Yeah, that's Ty Dillon. Yeah, in the 25. In the 25, yeah. Ty Dillon with a nice, nice run today. They needed it. Ben Rhodes just ahead. They're racing behind. Ben is on his way forward. Remember, he pitted after most of these trucks after the after the stage end. That's Chastain just ahead of him there. Back there in 11th, 12th, 13th positions. So Ty Dillon, one of two drivers in the field who are running the Xfinity race coming up next. And I just got a note. Kyle Larson, who qualified on pole, had a crack in his brake rotors, had to change him out. He'll start in the back. Oh, wow. That's going to that's gonna be quite a show. Yes, it will be. We've seen quite a show here with these trucks today. We sure have, except for Corey Heim. It's been nice, smooth sailing for Corey. Started this race second, his best start of the year by a lot. Just op opening up that lead now, over eight seconds over the second place running Majeski. You can see where he spent most of his time. He's led 20 laps, been right up front. I like how you can hear those tires squalling <laughs> when they work their way up Look the at track. That. Clear track ahead, clear track behind. 
That aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. And every sporting event is even more special when you look up at the sky and see that Goodyear blimp floating above. That's an experience. Got to take my hat off to Goodyear. And last Sunday, they had their hands full, and, and they, they talked to us. They gave us the story. They stayed on top of it. It was very impressive. We appreciate their partnership and, and how they help us in the media. It you know, was an unbelievable race last Sunday at Bristol. I was up in one of the suites and I was telling people what was going on. And when that first green flag pit stop started rolling around and guys were slowing down dramatically, I was like, yeah, folks, this has never <laughs> happened before. You're seeing something that has never happened. So much fun at Bristol. I kid you not. We had about 20 laps to go, and I started seeing stuff coming out of the sky. And I thought it was bugs, which happens at the racetracks. You know, it's springtime. It was raining cords. It was <laughs> cotton coming down all over the ground. I'd never seen anything like it. Another good battle here. Ross Chastain is getting to the inside of Dean Thompson. This is for the ninth spot. And he Ross pushes Chastain. him over. Is that tight battle behind him, too? Yeah, I don't think Ty was close enough to take advantage, but there's Ben Rhodes. That's where I, I said, He's going to go? take advantage. Where do you go? I lost him. <laughs> ben Rhodes is trying to take advantage. And he's got it. And here comes Ty Dillon. Ben Rhodes started in the back of the field, ran up front. A little strategy got him mired back there a little bit, but fresher tires, and he's on the move. I think if he got the stage points he got, if he can finish up in the top 10, I think it's going to be a great day for Ben Rhodes and that team. Seven laps to go here. Corey Heim continues to lead. Both uh, the 77 and Chase Purdy went around. Having a really solid run was Chase. That's going to hurt his finish run better than he's going to finish for sure. So Corey Himes got about an eight and a half second lead over Ty Majeski. Connor Zilich behind that. Maybe a little contact from the 38 of Lane Riggs. It looks like it. Lane's being shown four laps down because of his electrical troubles earlier. There you see Tyler Ankrum. We saw him on pit road getting his hood squished down. Tyler slipped by the outside of that spin. He's currently in the 15th position. See Jack Wood coming onto the scene there. There's a lot of damaged trucks in this field, but they put on a good show for us. And there's things to watch everywhere. You could put 100 cameras out there. <laughs> you still can't capture it all. It feels like we do have 100, because I don't yeah. think it's just a thing. <laughs> I don't think we've just anything. <laughs> it's been incredible. Taylor Gray's made his way around the seven of Zilich, up to the third spot. Zilich taking care of his truck. I think he's just getting outrun right now, Jay. Yeah, 100%. I don't see it smoking anymore, so maybe it did clear itself, Michael, like you had mentioned. Yeah, that's for sure. Just doesn't have the pace now that he had earlier. Yeah. And he had the pay after they changed. Ooh, oh, sideways, sideways completely sideways. But he had the pace even after he had the sway bar arm yeah. change. He had the pace, so it wasn't that that was a problem. He's on the same tires as Corey Heim, so it's not a strategy issue either. Just track probably changed a bit throughout the course of the day with the rubber going down. Weather hasn't really changed, been pretty consistent. Nice overcast day, what you want as a racer. A little more grip when that sun's not beaming down on the racing surface. About 70 degrees here. Has been a perfect day for racing. Supposed Corey, to be the same tomorrow. Corey Hama thinks in cruise mode now. He's no longer down there in those 13s. He's backed it down to about 215 flat. First four trucks all ran in the 15s, but uh, he's got that cushion and there's no sense in pushing it. Yeah, you never know. You, you might need to save some tire for a late caution for a restart. Corey Himes finishes this season second, third, third, sixth. <laughs> Looking at his first win of the season here. If he can just hang on, been a good day for him. This is a tense time, though, whether, whether you're sitting on the pit box or behind that wheel, just trying to make sure you log laps and take care of that huge lead that he has and hope all the other competitors keep their trucks straight so you don't have to give that lead up under caution. A couple of first timers in the top 10. Got a cup driver in the top 10 with Ross Chastain back there in ninth. Look at that long straightaway as he stretches that Toyota out. 
letting it have all it's got down the back. Should be comfortable in, in his window, pitting on lap 23. Uh, we're still we slipping and sliding tires. <laughs> <laughs> you can see him turn the wheel back to the right because he got a little bit loose. So much for that taking care of things. <laughs> Let's just get back to the race. That's Stuart Friesen trying to hold off Ross Chastain. Ben Rhodes lurking back there in that 99 truck. He's running 10th. Good effort for Stewart also to have a top 10 run going here. It's like Ty Dillon's trying to peek out on Dean Thompson. Dean's there, though. Ty Dillon, it's been a rough start to the season, adjusting to this new team. Best finish 14th at Atlanta. Certainly a great run for him today. If he can hang on, he's in the 12th spot. Just picks up another one, now 11th. Talked to Crew Chief Shane Wilson yesterday. He said, We're, we are building a team. We're going to get better. We're going to be better each and every week. Just getting word that the seven. Oh, no. Connor Zilich cutting the course. And now this, the 33. Lawless Allen stopped on the track. He's off the racing line. Four Connor Zilich is on pit road. The caution is out now. I like that. For move. the fifth time. He's he, not going to win the race. Why not put fresh tires on and see what happens? He's, he, cut, he cut the course. Oh, he, he did served cut the, his, he he served the penalty. penalty. Yeah. But I still don't mind if you're outside. I mean, it might have been a little bit much for him, but if you're outside the top 15, I certainly don't mind coming in and put tires because if you get a couple, maybe a couple overtime restarts, you can gain some spots. Yeah, and remember the fuel window. we got to think about that, too, when you talk about overtime and how long this track is. <laughs> we said fuel windows right around 22 laps. We go any overtime at all. Yeah, these People, caution laps will help. It'll but, help for sure. But also, when you think about overtime and restarting, that's a lot of distance. Won't help enough, I don't think. I don't think uh, Corey Heim is Lawless Allen's biggest fan right now, do you? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> You see five laps to go. The truck has picked up the field. Corey we, Heim. We know the front of this field's all set. Not to come to pit road. Corey Heim's thinking, I got this. I feel like he's got so much confidence the way he races his vehicle and, and, and just the things that he says. But there's still always that possibility of contact when, you're, when you have a late restart. I mean, right now we've got Tyler Ankham running in the 15th position. Why not come to pit road? What do we have? It's 27 trucks on the lead lap. Come to pit road. See if we can make something happen. And we talked about all the passing zones. So there's a lot of opportunities, especially if you put yourself on some fresh tires versus a competition. A lot of opportunity to make your moves and get up to, to inside of that top 10. Maybe pump those tires up a little bit where they'll perform like they are for qualifying. Michael, I like what you said. We're going to have another restart. Oh, yeah. It's going to be good. So and you know how things get a little bit crazy lead. in Austin. <laughs> they do. Well, they're going to get a little crazy next week. And as pro football is back, and it's on Fox as the UFL kicks off next Saturday with the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions taking on the XFL champion Arlington Renegades. Kickoff weekend continues next Sunday on ESPN. I'm looking forward to this. The season without football is too long for many, so here you go. <laughs> And I was looking at the schedule. My son really wants to go to a UFL game, um, a USFL game. And when we're in Talladega, they're actually the, the Birmingham Stallions are going to oh, be perfect. playing in perfect. Birmingham. Yeah. So let's go. I think we have a road trip going, huh? I think we do. I Birmingham's just outside of Talladega, about 45 minutes. So why not? I think it's pretty awesome what Jack Hawksworth has accomplished today, running mm -hmm. solidly in the top five all day long right there. Yeah, first truck race. He actually did run an Xfinity race several years ago. I think for Joe Gibbs, actually qualified on the front row, had some trouble, finished, I think, maybe 15th or something like that. Zilich caught quite the break there with his pass-through penalty after cutting the track limits because the caution fell right at the same time. He had great track position, was only, only lost a couple of spots. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this place is so cool for. Fans just laying around enjoying a beautiful NASCAR day. I love it. We've been watching these shots, you know, offline all day long, and all the little kids love to start on the hills and run all the <laughs> way down to the fence and then run all the way back. 
So many campers here. This place is packed. Great weekend for camping. Oh, we're we gonna got have, a, we're gonna uh, have okay. some takers, I think. Oh, we, we are. Got a couple right there. Grafton's coming. Zillage. Zillage is coming. Looks like Ty, Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon. Amanda. To Connor Zillage, pit this time, pit this time. Connor was like, why? They are taking fuel and four tires. <laughs> Bill, you said why, because <laughs> he can't win the race. He didn't feel like from where he was. We saw how much faster Corey Heim was than him. Brian Patty's here for one thing. The crew chief on that truck, we're going to win the race. Jamie. We see the number 88, Matt Crafton, now at a stop. And this really came down to Matt Crafton and his decision. Jared Prince, the crew chief, he wanted to stop. He said, they're eight tenths a lap faster than you every time. I'd rather you be able to drive through him than have to play on the offense. And so that's what they just decided to do, make this stop and put on some fresh tires, as is number 18, Tyler Ingram. All right, so this should be fun. Yeah, I, I knew that I, I felt like they should from Ingram back, should stop, but they stopped way before that. Four laps to go here from Circuit of the Americas. Stay with us, you won't want to miss the finish. that little boy's shirt. Dale Earnhardt fan, Austin Dillon fan. He's got the three on the front. Dad's a Kyle Busch fan. <laughs> They're going to keep it in the RCR family. Yes, they are. They keep everybody happy in the family. You meet a lot of fans. <laughs> They're rooting for opposite teams, opposite drivers. It's always fun. We're getting Woo! ready to go racing, Woo! guys. All right, three laps to go here when they drop the flag. There's going to be a frenzy. I can't wait to watch these trucks head up that hill into turn one. Once again, Corey Heim, Ty Majeski. Great start by Majeski. He's side by side with Heim as they race up the hill. And here comes Jack Hawksworth to the bottom. Trying to get around Taylor Gray. Locks Whoa. it up. 
Corey Heim, nice and clean, hangs on to the lead. It's like a big funnel when they get down to turn <laughs> one. Taylor Gray back in third. Look at Stuart Friesen getting around Jack, Jack's, Jack Hawksworth. Nice job by Stuart. Side by side right behind them. Ross Chastain's in that battle as well as Sanchez. Ben Rhodes is right in there as well. Keep your eye out for that Napa truck. Oh, we and got a trucks spin. around all over Chase Purdy there in the 77 12 of Dale Quarterly. They're all getting them going. It will not result in a caution. OK, we stay green. Meanwhile, up front, Corey Heim so good on the restarts. He has been perfect all day today. Led 25 laps so far, continues leading. Great battle here. Oh, Stuart Taylor there. Gray you can see it. Gets around Majeski for second. There's Connor Zilich. He came in for those fresh tires. He's back there in 11th. He's the first truck with the fresh tires. See, he's racing with Dean Thompson. It's Stuart Friesen. In the fourth spot, guys, he's looking for his first top 10 of the season. Could be a top five if he can hang on. Yeah, I had that crash at Bristol. Ooh, look at Ty Majeski locks it up. those tires. Taylor Gray to second. Taylor Gray, so impressive today. We okay. saw him win an ARCA race at Mid-Ohio a couple years ago, Jamie. Yeah, certainly good on these style of race tracks. Stewart's giving that thing all it's got, isn't he? Oh, he was Garrett dead squealing. sideways. We Love see him it. just lose the front end because he's trying so hard it just won't quite stick for him. Nick Sanchez picks up another spot into the top five. Ross Chastain in the 45. He wants to bring home a top five here. Corey Heim up front, about a one second lead over Taylor Gray. Corey Heim is in charge. And two to go here at Circuit of the Americas. Three wide. Look at Christian Eckes. Hello. Oh, Locking no. it up. He's Huge. locking him up. Will he get it stopped? No, he's and spinning. he goes around. He came in hot. I said a bit ago, watch that Napa truck. He was making some <laughs> wild moves, and that one didn't pay off. He's shown in the ninth spot. I love the tire squealing. Me too. It's so fun. <laughs> Watch this. The 19 tries to go three wide with the bonsai move, locks the tires up. Ben Rhodes says, where are you going? <laughs> ah. That's exactly what Connor Zilich did on the initial start of this race. He made it about two laps before his tires blew out, too. So Christian's hoping that he can make it two laps. Big block by Hawksworth on Ross Chastain. It's going to give Ross the exit speed. As you can see, he drives up beside the one truck. Really shallow entry that time for Hawksworth. Here comes Ross. He's going to get up beside him. This is a battle for a top five finish. Remember, Ross Chastain got his first career Cup Series win here back in 2022. First time we ever saw the watermelon smash. Here he is fighting for a top five here in the Truck Series. He picks it up. He's got it for nine for now. Zilich is already back in the top 10. He was right behind that battle. That battle's going to rage on. Ben Rhodes just watching it. Good racing. Ben says, y'all keep that up. I'll be right there. Yeah, there's Zilich right behind Ben Rhodes. <laughs> oh. What oh, in the wow. world? That's, that's, that's the Marco rear, Andretti. That's the rear end housing of that truck. I've never seen that before. What a shot that was. Meanwhile, the 11 of Corey Heim coming out in 19. Caution is out. Oh, I have never seen that before of you, Michael, <laughs> other than in a, in a really bad wreck. That is unbelievable. Well, I saw Marco kind of limping down the front stretch with a lot of smoke. Remember, serious issue. Remember, we said. Wow, the fuel window is right around 22 laps. I mean, you're so, going to peek underneath the hood. Look at this. His rear end fell out, literally. And that's going to take a while to, to, to hook that truck up and get it back. That's why I brought up the fuel window, because I know we're saving gas under caution, but this could take a while. Marco's shaking his head like I've never seen such a thing. 
He's had some strange things happen to him in his truck races. Track officials got that record right there, right away. Great work by them. Gonna have to have another record to get that rear end housing. This was Marco's first truck race of seven scheduled. He's also running a lot of the Arca Menard series races. That's what a complete rear end housing looks like. <laughs> if you haven't seen one lately. If you haven't seen one. Wow. There it is. Goodness. That means the trailing arms that hook that to think. And then it Grand goes House rolling the, right in front of him. Yeah, to the frame are gone. Wow. See brake duct hoses flapping. Well, that's wild. Caution is out for the sixth time. Shock. You see a shock flipping around the silver thing on the far side. There's a shot from afar. Oh, wow. There it goes. Popped right out. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Phil. <laughs> I've lost a couple of rear end housings in a wreck or two, but never just driving down the road. Yeah. See the shocks flipping around, brake duct hoses flipping around. The rear end gear is, is in that rear end housing. Wow. Bruce Cook is crew chief right now, just must be beside himself. He's been in this sport a long time. Wonder if he's ever seen that. So Corey Iams has got to be shaking his head as well. He was just coming out of turn number 20, about to take the white flag when this happened. Yeah, that's the rear end gear right in the center of the red thing with that black yoke on it. Obviously, it's coming loose from the drive shaft. There's a the shock over on the right side, the silver and gold. Let's listen to Taylor Gray's radio. Soft here. If we're down to 20 pounds of fuel pressure, we're not going to make it if this thing goes another lap or two here. Well, his teammate Ty Majeski also concerned. I just talked to Joe Shear Jr. if they were worried about fuel, and he said, you betcha. I hope they get this thing cleaned up good and fast. That's what we were talking about, Amanda, that uh, that fuel window. Corey Heim last pitted on 23. So a little bit better than Taylor Gray and Ty Majeski, who were in on 21. So you see it there laps since last pit as Michael was just talking about. So we're going to have NASCAR overtime and we're under caution for this. See, that's rear and grease coming out of out of that line that's flipping around just in spots, which NASCAR will have to tend to see all that grease, as you said. Somewhere Larry Mack is watching this with intensity. How many caution laps have we had, Phil, since these guys pitted? We've had four so far, so that might save them four laps. But, you know, when we talk about, uh, Michael, we talk about the pit window being 22 laps. I also talked to some crew chiefs that said maybe more like 19 or 20 laps. It would be nice if NASCAR might consider stopping them so that it isn't an issue, but that cleanup could take a while, too, so they might have to do that. I know all those drivers that pitted on lap 38 said, no, 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 let's keep going, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> So they're going to bring them down the front stretch now. We're told that NASCAR will stop them, bring out the red flag for the cleanup. We'll have NASCAR overtime after the cleanup for this.
Next week, Fox Saturday Baseball returns with a star-studded showdown as Aaron Judge and Juan Soto lead the Yankees against Jose Altuve and the Astros, or the Giants take on the Padres. It all begins at 7 Eastern. Check for the game in your area. Well, we're under caution here for the sixth time for the rear end housing falling out, literally, of Marco Andretti's truck. Some of these truckers, a lot of them, close on fuel, so they brought him to a stop on the front stretch. So while we have a minute, let's dial up our our race leader. You see it right there. Wow. <laughs> hey, Corey, I'm Phil Parsons in the Fox booth. You got a copy? 10-4, gotcha. What do you have done an awesome job? You told us yesterday during the practice and qualifying show that you didn't feel like you were very good last year, but man, you have more than made up for today. That thing's been a rocket ship. Yeah, so far so good. I, uh, you know, I was coming to see the white there, unfortunately, but uh, it's part of racing, and um, you know, hopefully we can get through turn one here out front and uh, you know keep it going. I feel like we've done a phenomenal job with our safe flight Dodger T R D Pro uh, throughout the day. He's gonna get the truck on garage and Toyota Racing for everything they do and contribute. Uh, definitely can't complain about the speed of it, but definitely some other variables out of our control that we got to get through first. What do you think? Turn one is that the biggest uh, obstacle in your way? Yeah, I'd say so. There's not many out front, so I guess that's the uh, that's the big one. All right, buddy. I appreciate. It. We're going to talk to your crew chief right now, Jamie. And that's Scott Zepidelli, and they were three to the good, meaning you had three laps of extra fuel in that truck before these cautions started flying. What level of concern do you have with another restart? I'm not sure what you said there, but uh, we're close on fuel. We're really close, but uh, looks like we can make it. He was running 80% the last stint, so hopefully uh, he saved a little bit there. Um, but he's done a great job. We've had a lot of fun. We didn't need that extra drama there with a rear end house rolling across the racetrack, but, you know, that's part of racing, and uh, we'll see what we can do. They've been able to lead 26 laps so far. Let's see if they can lead the one that matters. Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. And Connor Zilich talked about him all day and the day he has had in his debut in the Craftsman Truck Series. Let's dial him up. Let's well, see what he's thinking right now. Connor Zilich, it's Michael Waltrip and the Fox team. Do you copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, it's been an adventurous day, buddy. Uh, what do you think about your first NASCAR experience? That truck's got a lot of speed and you got fresher tires. You think you could still win this thing? Yeah, it's uh, definitely not out of the cards. Um, you know, the Spire Motorsports group with Austin Hatcher Foundation on the truck's been really fast today. Just the driver's been making too many mistakes, but um, we're sitting at a good spot here to, you know, get a good finish and uh, just got to get it to the end. All right, buddy, thanks for your time. We're going to talk to your crew chief now down on pit road. Hopefully he ain't too mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> There are some smiles up here from Brian Patty. I'm sure you're pretty uh, relieved about that call into pit lane for Connor Zilich there. It is not over yet. What are your hopes for Connor on this restart? Uh, just, you know, we no more mistakes, right? Let's get through turn one and let's race through the S's. Um, you know, the last right rear tire when we pitted it was destroyed. So he's learned a lot, I would hope so. Um, it's just been a crazy day, but I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, all the Spire Motorsports team is uh, stuck behind us and, you know, we got a shot at top five. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> so Taylor Gray in the 17, another one that's had an eventful day shown in the second spot right now. Let's listen to his radio. Hey, buddy, we get back around here to pit road. We're going to have to stop. We're going to be out on lap 43. Mm. We're coming to lap 43 right now. I hate to do it, but it just didn't work out for us. It looked awfully good there for a while. Wow, that's exactly right. That's bad news if you're the driver thinking, man, can we just try to stretch it? Do we say the radio didn't work? I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, remember last year, Kyle Busch, Brian Petty, that same crew chief, tried to get Kyle Busch to come to pit road. He didn't. Then the caution came out. He got caught and ended up restarting 15th, got back to second, but he didn't win the race like they felt like they should have. So we're about ready to go into NASCAR overtime for the first time. Here's the rules. It's a two-lap shootout. If the leader takes the white flag, the next flag will end the race, whether it's caution or the checkers. Caution prior to white flag causes the restart. So we'll do it as many times as needed, but it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be wild is what it's <laughs> going to be. we, we got to get 3.4 miles around yes. here to the white flag. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, we, 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 with Taylor Gray saying, I think I'm going to make it. I'm just going to stay out. But it's three miles. I mean, three and a half miles by the time you get around here. And you've got to do that twice. So if it's even close, you got to pit. I mean, it's almost seven miles. That's, that's, that's a gallon and a half for sure. There you see the 
lap since pitted. Corey's got a bit of a buffer there. Yeah, Taylor and Majeski both pitted on lap 22. Remember, we talked about what an advantage it was for those guys to get to pit road prior to the caution being waived. Now it might it might bite them if they're <laughs> they don't have enough fuel to get to the end. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, huh? yeah. Beautiful speedway here. Helicopters, planes, there's all kinds of action out there. So pits will be open this time. And we'll go racing the next time, I expect. So the 17 was told he'll need to pit. Wonder what they're telling Ty Majeski in the 98. Majeski also on that same strategy. Yeah. Pitting a couple of laps before our leader, Corey Heim. Ben Rhodes in the top 10 along with Connor Zilich. I can't believe how tidy that that restart was in turn one. I really expected those trucks to go four and five wide. And well. Do you expect this to be tidy? I didn't expect that one to, so I'm <laughs> not going to expect this one to be. Corey <laughs> Heim is exactly hoping right. it is. He's been so good on the restarts today. Oh no! Uh -oh. Seventeen stayed out. Is this maybe they push all over again. Maybe they say give it one, tr give it one more lap. I, I think so too. I mean, if he, he's going to come come in, there's 26 trucks on the lead lap. They've had a great season so far. I, I like that strategy. Stay out and let's hope we have enough fuel. Hope's a great strategy, isn't it, Michael? Yeah, it's if you're out out of cards, you know, you can hope for better ones. Lap leaders today, Corey Heim, 26 laps, continues as the leader. Sanchez, four laps. Tanner Gray, four laps. So talk about turn one, lap one. Woo, we got off to a crazy start. Counter Zilla just straight off the racetrack, just overshot turn one, locked up the front tires. That's the result of that. Had to come in and change a sway bar arm. This is Stuart Friesen's beginning to a wild day for that truck. He's been up and down, but has done a nice job recovering. 17's had a wild day, locks it up right there, had a lot of damage on the right side, as you see. He's had to fight his way back to the Ford. Look how tight that is right there. Tyler Ankrum pulls out, just clips Dale quarterly. Nick Sanchez and the 13 of Jake Garcia get together. Nick goes around, keeps it running. And there's Tanner Gray and Raja Karuth. 18 of Tyler Ankrum getting into the 15 of Tanner Gray. And here comes the bonsai that didn't pay off. Look at his commitment. You got to like that, right? <laughs> Tries to save it and around he goes. And then the latest caution. Bam, all wow. by himself. Marco Andretti loses the rear end housing and away it rolls. That, that one's unbelievable. Yes, Still. it is. Nice that, looking rear end housing. Though. That would have to been a very violent. <laughs> Look at this shot. What oh, a place babe. to watch this race from. You could see the entire course from up there. Is that as high as the airplane up there? <laughs> Felt like it. <laughs> what ask, a shot. Ask Carson Hosobar. He'll tell you. <laughs> what is Carson Hosobar? About 6'3"? Six, 6'6", six, six, I bet. Yeah. Is six, he that tall? He's probably 6'5". I think this is a real interesting <laughs> part of the race for Taylor Gray. What's he going to do? I, I think it's a good call. I mean, he, he knows he's going to finish probably outside the top 20. If he uh, if he pits and he, he he stands a chance of making it and he's running up in the on the front row. You think a really violent wheel hop could have caused that rear end to bust loose and I eventually fall out. Maybe break the trailing arms or something yeah. like that. I, th I think that's the only thing that makes any sense. Dale quarterly. Well, another issue for him. That may that may delay us another lap and that's going to really hurt. You can roll backwards. Nothing coming in. I don't think it is. Great. I, I hope think we're going to get down the, the green. Hill. Look at the damages. Is that Grant Enfinger back is. there on the left side? Black and yellow truck. So if Dale Quarterly can back up down the hill, back onto pit road where he just came from, it looks he, like he'll be able to do it. Oh, great job. Great yes. job by Dale. It's uphill into turn one, <laughs> which means if you're going backwards, it's just downhill. downhill. Yeah. You don't need power. Big restart coming, big restart. Lights off on the pace truck. A lot of anticipation here for Corey Heim and Taylor Gray. I think Taylor Gray's 
in a bind, according to his team. Ross Chastain back there in fifth, nothing to lose. It's all about the win here. What's he going to do on the restart? Ben Rhodes, seventh. It's a couple more spots. He's looking for his first top 10 of the day. And of course, they're going to restart differently than the pylon shows. But I mean, Ben Rhodes just had a great day. Be nice for him to get out of here with a solid top five. He shares that fourth row with Connor Zilich. These guys are heating those tires, cleaning those tires off, getting all the debris off of them so they can have a wild run up the hill. And Rhodes said he really likes to go through the middle into turn one. He said it really spreads out a little bit for you. What do they say? Buckle those belts one last time. Here we go. Green flag is in the air. NASCAR overtime. Corey, I'm talked about turn one. That's the biggest obstacle in his way. Ty Majeski behind him. Taylor Gray. Wow, nice what a job clean behind. effort. Yes. Oh, we're and gonna have a we go. Is that Sanchez? Corey Heim again gets away. That was Nick Sanchez that went around. There he is. Corey Heim has a, has a little breathing room over Taylor Gray. So two laps here. He'll take the white next time by. Once he takes the white, the next flag will end it. Taylor Gray obviously nursing that fuel, but he has to go hard to try to stay ahead of Majeski. Is that Zilich up to fourth? Is he fourth or fifth? Zilich was battling. He is Zilich into the fourth spot. Got by Ross Chastain. Now he can set his sights on that battle for second. And remember, there's fuel issues, concerns for the 17 of Gray. A little oh. slide by Zilich. Ross came back. Was able to hold him off, though. Matt Crafton, he got tires as well, and he's raced his way up inside the top 10. Trying Another to get great around. job for Matt. No kidding. Trying to get around Jack Hawksworth right there. Continues to battle. He settles in behind him. I think he's got a better truck right now than a couple ahead of him. Corey Himes been pretty much perfect today. Done everything right. He has. That's a great way to put it, Jamie. And that restart was exe executed perfectly as well protected that inside, but yet had still had a good angle on his exit and didn't overshoot that corner. So he didn't have any exit speed. Brand new race truck built just for this race. Again, this is the only time when we we will race on the road course this year. <laughs> Another truck that I'm really impressed by He's stuck right there in that battle that 52 of Stuart Friesen. He's been all over the place, but still solidly in the top 10 yeah, and older tires and a lot of those trucks he's racing around. Here comes Corey Heim and hold down his, the straightaway. Going to hold his breath to the start finish yes, line. Yes, he is. You'll see the white flag come out. There it is. One lap to go for Corey Heim. Taylor Gray, Ty Majeski, Connor Zilich, Ross Chastain. Chastain's not done back there. Really, the next flag ends it, whether it's caution or checker. Look at Corey, is he wiggling that truck? Is he having some fuel pressure issues? Good question, Phil. I saw him doing just that. Maybe just being extra careful to keep plenty of fuel in the pickup. The top three, definitely concerned about fuel at this point. 3.4 miles around here. Got about a half a lap to go for the leaders. I would so say great call by Jeff Hensley, Taylor Gray to stay out, but we've got a half lap to go here. <laughs> it's not over yet. It's not. Holding their breath, just trying to make it to the finish. Taylor Gray and that 17 team deserve a great finish after the day they've had. They kept fighting back. They know that fuel is an issue. Can they hang on? They just went through turn 11. Would we say 100 seconds from turn 11 back to the start finish line? Can you hold your breath 100 seconds? I don't think so. Oh, Reason's man, Friesen Raja and Karu. Raja off the road. They keep them straight. Oh, a lap truck truck kind of forced Corey wide. That's Dale Quarterly. Look at that battle for second. Ty Majeski putting the pressure on, trying to pick up that second spot. Corey Heim, just a couple more turns. 
Looking for that checkered flag. Looking for the first win of the season. They have been so strong. Came here after so much time, research, effort put into this race. He's been flawless. That's exactly right. Perfect. 29 laps and counting. Here comes Corey Heim. He sees the checkered flag. It's Heim time at Circuit of the Americas as Corey Heim gets it done. Taylor yeah, Gray. Texas. Taylor Gray job, hangs boys. on. Whew, sigh of relief. Well, he's got enough for a little burnout. Taylor doesn't. Taylor's out. Unbelievable. Oh. Well done. Stop to say hi. Congratulations. Jeff Hensley. Great job, Corey. Ty Majeski third. Connor Zilich. What a day for that young 17-year-old. Making his truck series debut. Hangs on to fourth. And Ross Chastain brings it home fifth. Mr. Heim time, Corey Heim. He's also Mr. Consistency. I think he's just going to keep burning it down until he's out, boys. He runs out of fuel or tires. <laughs> One, of the, One two. of the two. Either that or he gets really dizzy. <laughs> Remember Zane Smith last year literally burned it down. He was on fire. 30 laps led today. That's pretty dominant. Second career road course win for Corey Heim. Hello. I'm going to say hello to the flag man. Yes. That's something he didn't do all day was go around. <laughs> he was one of the few, wasn't he? He was. Top of the hill in turn number one. You start the burnout there and all the way down he goes, putting on a show for the fans. There's the team ready to celebrate with their driver. That gives us four drivers already locked into the playoffs. Four of our regulars have won in the five races this year. Five different winners on the season. It's been a competitive truck series start. We said that at Daytona, I think, Phil, how strong this field is in 2024. Jake Blau, the man with the best shots right there of the winners. Look how straight that truck is. Not a scratch on it. Mm -hmm. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet money there isn't another truck in the field that doesn't have a scratch on it. <laughs> we saw so much action today. What time, baby? What time? Yep. I'm time. First place, baby. This young man's going to have a lot of wins in his future. So talented. A couple years ago, in one of his first starts, restarted late in the race on the front row at Darlington. That'll get your attention as a broadcaster. Guys like us, Phil, that have been around the sport forever, seeing someone do that, you're like, all right, well, this is a little bit different than most. <laughs> well, you and I, Phil, we covered him in ARCA. We knew what he was capable oh, yeah. of. This young oh, man yeah. battled tooth and nail with Ty Gibbs. Now here he is, Corey Heim. In his 46th start, he gets his sixth career win. Jamie Howe is with the winner. Well, we've talked about it all day. He left this race unhappy with that sixth place finish last season. Corey Heim, you are now a back-to-back -back road course winner. What have you now proven to the entire pit area as well as yourself? I uh, just prepared so hard for this race. Uh, huge thank you to everyone back at Truck on Garage Shorter Racing. Uh, the Safe Flight Tundra TRD Pro is phenomenal. Uh, huge thank you to uh, Trevor Bain for my pre-race stuff. He's helped me so much. Uh, Keegan and Eric back at 2311 as well. Uh, just so many so much help through uh, so many different areas for this race for me. I came into this race last year and just struggled, really. Uh, I think I finished sixth with a penalty and just all over the place. And uh, to put together a solid race like this is so special and uh, really just shows you how good our trucks are back at the shop. Resume Builder is a word that you used yesterday. You have now finished inside of the top six in every race of this 2024 season. What do you take away as you head forward? Yeah, just great consistency. I mean, that was the name of the game last year to make it as far as we did and uh, had an unfortunate result at the end. But I think this year we can make it back and prove it that we're champions. So I'm um, super excited for the rest of the year. We're really just getting started. I feel like our best trucks are in front of us. So uh, definitely can't wait. Congratulations. Taylor Gray out of the truck, and I think you're taking in this moment. I did talk to your crew chief, Jeff Hensley. He was breathing better after they saw that checkered flag. How was those last couple laps for you knowing the fuel issue? Yeah, I mean, just 
Uh, you know, I can't thank everybody enough at Tricon Garage for me a really good JBL Tundra TRD Pro. I uh, debatably ruined a race at the beginning of the race uh, by uh, getting that penalty and um, kind of the heat of the emotions got to me a little bit after that. But uh, just uh, can't thank all the guys enough for rebounding so good. And uh, it sucks. I mean, you know, we put ourselves in position. Jeff did a really good strategy call to get us back up front, but just couldn't attack those last couple laps. I feel like we probably could have had something for the 11, maybe gave him a little harder of a race to at there at the end. But, you know, congrats to those guys. They executed well all day long. And, um, you know, we just uh, got to keep executing, and we'll get us a few. Yeah, you can thank yourself for rebounding, too. <laughs> Jamie? Good day for Tricon Garage, no doubt. How about Taylor Gray? Three top fives in the last four races. So let's take a look at our playoff leaderboard as it stands. Corey Heim, Christian Eckes, Nick Sanchez, Raja Karuth all highlighted because they all have wins so far. How about Ben Rose? We talked about the tough start to the season. Now only one point below that line. Brett Holmes has spent most of the season in that top ten. He drops out there. Stuart Friesen with another frustrating day spinning late. Ben Rhodes picks up his first top 10 of the season. Nice work for him. Go home to his brand new little baby girl, Belle. Well, we have a lot more racing action coming your way tomorrow on Fox race day at 3 p.m. Eastern. And then it's the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at 3.30 Eastern. Looking forward to covering all the action from Pitt Road. How about the next Truck Series race? We'll have a weekend off and then Martinsville, April 5th, right here on FS1. Don't be any beating and banging there, will there? <laughs> Not at all. Coming up next, Xfinity Series race day. Thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations, Corey Heim, he gets it done.